Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I was I was originally nervous before I came here, but then I just realized, you know, I was so happy to be Muslim that it just kind of all went away. Alhamdulillah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salat wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. I've been given 10 minutes to tell you everything about what led me to Islam, which any convert will tell you. <laughs> That's going to be tough, but I'll give it my best shot. Uh, as was mentioned, I'm 23 years old. I'm an engineering student, and I'm also working full time right now. And alhamdulillah, I have the privilege of studying here in the Alam program. I've been Muslim for about four and almost a half years now and I've been able to learn a significant amount of Arabic, learn some Islamic fiqh, and even some hikmah of the Quran. So alhamdulillah, it's, it's great to be here. And I guess the question of the day is what led me to Islam? Someone who four and a half years ago had a different idea of where he was going to be in life. And now I'm here in the masjid speaking in front of, in front of my brothers and sisters. I never thought this would happen, ever. So as I was growing up, I grew up in a Christian family, but I say that with some hesitance because my family is really one that believes in God, but not particularly religious. As a kid, I used to go to church. I used to participate in the youth group, uh, actually down the street a ways at Glen Memorial, um, and I was a Methodist. But really, I just enjoyed being around the people there. I enjoyed the friendship. I enjoyed basically the people more than it was the actual religious aspect of it. And as a child and, as gro and growing up through high school, I always felt like there was something wrong with aspects of going out to parties and drinking. Like something felt wrong to me about it. You know, even if I went along with people, it just something didn't seem right. So even in high school, up until I was about 17 years old, I knew nothing formal about Islam. My knowledge was so skewed that I used to think that the Prophet Muhammad salam, was actually what Muslims called Jesus, peace be upon him. So my idea was just, it was completely wrong, but I never bothered asking anyone because I wasn't very interested. I didn't have any reason to go out and seek another religion because I was happy with who I was. Nothing was wrong in my life. Everything was great. Until high school, 17 years old, I think it was junior year in high school, I actually met a young Muslimah. And I had had Muslim friends at that time, but none of them were really practicing in front of me. I never really saw what Islam actually was. So when I met this young Muslim, she was also not what I would say very practicing. I didn't really see any actions of Muslims. I didn't really see what Islam was all about. But this person had a significant impact on me. We developed a, a close friendship. Um, and after some time, I noticed that there were things with her that were uncomfortable, what I would consider to be normal among teenagers. For example, in high school, a lot of people go to prom or a school dance. And for her, that was something that was very, I could tell that there was a lot of worry or a lot of difficulty. And I didn't really know why I didn't ask. I thought it had something to do with culture. And eventually, after some months of this friendship, I noticed that she decided that this something wasn't right and she didn't want to be as close friends anymore. And this got me thinking. I, I was wondering, was it cultural? Was it who I am? Is it because I'm white? Is, I don't know what's going on. You know, I thought we were good friends. But I knew that it had to be something religious. And for the first time in my life, I decided to ask, what was that? What is Islam? I never knew anything about it. And so from there, shortly after, I decided to start looking into the Quran. I bought a translation with all my parents' money. I went over to Barnes & Noble, their credit card, got a copy of the Quran, checked the internet. And like any person who doesn't know anything, they got Islam for dummies. I actually have the book sitting on my shelf at home, which is actually not a bad resource. So I started learning more about Islam, and I came to know a world, of, uh, a world that was not what I expected. I started learning about the pillars of Islam, which aren't as intuitive to a person. So when someone who is not part of a faith is learning about that faith, the aspects and the importance of Salat isn't something that comes to a person where they would say, yeah, that makes sense, that we should be doing that. What made sense to me were the theological and moral teachings of Islam. That I was raised to believe the first commandment that's in the Bible, which is, the Lord your God is one, which is, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. So these aspects I kept reading and saying, this is me. This is, this is what, I, what I've already believed in my entire life. I also was reading about the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, and how it says he is just a prophet. He is one of the best men that's ever walked this earth, but he is just a prophet. He's not God. 
And this resonated with me. This is, this is what I would say to myself, I already believed this. Because as a Christian, I wasn't very into it. But what I really believed was God. It was fitra. I had always believed in God. Recently, my mom and I were cleaning out the upstairs of our house, and I found a, a yearbook from preschool in which our teacher compiled random pieces of our lives at that time, and it said there was a conversation between me and my friends of the time, and we were asking, uh, we were talking about God, and so I know that as a young kid, even in preschool, I believed in God. I continued my learning. I even walked into a Walgreens and saw a woman in hijab, and I approached her, and she asked if I needed help, I said, yeah, can you tell me where the nearest mosque is? And she just looked at me and, yeah, sure, yeah. And so eventually I made my way to the masjid, asked questions, learned more about Islam, and came to the realization, this is already who I am. I've already believed this for my entire life. I just didn't know what it was called, and I'd never seen it before. So eventually I made my way, after a few months of practicing, I stopped eating pork, things like that, minor practices. I told myself, it's time to accept Islam. And I, I accepted Islam, alhamdulillah, in 2008, right after Ramadan. Initially, one of the challenges I faced was that you're coming from this lifestyle that's very different from the one that you've stepped in. You have a completely different mindset of what you want to do in life and where you're going. And I kind of use the expression, I saw myself living in a television show where this life wasn't really real. It wasn't... You know, it wasn't something tangible, it wasn't something with, with good substance. And now I'm stepped out of that TV show watching, you know, old friends live that life. And initially when I became Muslim, part of me wanted that life still, but I knew what was right. And after meeting Muslims, developing close friendships, I was brought back to Islam and I told myself, that's not the life that I want to live. I can't believe I wanted to live that life. And so my mindset started to change. And it's important to note that when people accept Islam, Sometimes they don't accept it with that 100% I'm ready to drop everything that I've done in my life and completely change my ways. What they come in there is they come in there with a belief, a belief that there is no God but Allah and that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God. And it has to build from there. Some other difficulties I faced, alhamdulillah, I was blessed with just a wonderful family. And when I told my parents, they just looked at me and said, cool, great, you're Muslim, alhamdulillah. I didn't say alhamdulillah, <laughs> but, but I became Muslim and there was very little opposition or discomfort with my family. In fact, today my mom will even tell me, she knows I only eat halal meat, so she'll say, don't eat that in the refrigerator, that's, that's got chicken in it, you know, it's not, it's not halal, and she'll go through and tell me. Even with my friends, uh, that was actually not even that much of a struggle with me as well, because I sort of adapted to my friends and they adapted to my lifestyle. And it's actually, if you, if you really live as a Muslim and you're not afraid to be Muslim and hide it, your friends will actually, I found that they, they migrate towards you. I actually have friends that, Allahu Alam, I don't know what they believe, they don't follow a religion, but when I pray, I was praying a couple weeks ago at my friend's house and someone came down the stairs talking and he said, shh, Pop's praying, everyone be quiet. So even, alhamdulillah, even the, my non-Muslim friends will be very accommodating towards me. Alhamdulillah. So one of the, and the last difficulty that I think that I faced was understanding the distinction between culture in Islam and what is actually Islam, what is Sunnah. You know, you walk into the masjid, growing up in America your whole life, and now I see people with a kurta, I see the shawar kameez and the pajamas, I see different thobes from different countries, brothers from Africa wearing different clothes, and I'm confused. I said, which one of this is Islam? Which, did the Prophet wear all these clothes? These are beautiful. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> And so over time, I had to develop that sense of, you know, what is Islam? And I realized that me wearing these clothes, me, me living this life, this is Sunnah. You know, the Prophet Muhammad salam, he used to wear loose-fitting clothing. He used to wear what, what fit in with his culture. And I found that, you know, we're, we're satisfying the conditions from both ends. And that's the beauty of Islam, is that Allah speaks in the Quran of our different nationalities and colors. And that's an ayah, that's a sign that Allah exists. Alhamdulillah. But in the short amount of time, the one thing that I really want to hit home and make a point on is that what, what led me to Islam was Allah, of course. But Allah sends these signs to people. And my sign was actually seeing a Muslim make one good decision in their life, right? They decided that what they were doing wasn't completely right, and they decided to follow what was right. And that got me interested in Islam. It wasn't the pamphlets at da'wah tables. Alhamdulillah, those are good. It was the actions of a Muslim. It was the, actions of, it was the action of being Muslim that I think f 
far too many of us seem to underestimate the power of it. Because there's no ayah of Quran that says, just wait for the miracles to come and then people will become Muslim. No. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ Who's better in speech than the one who calls to Allah? وَعَمِنَ الصَّالِحًا And who does the pious actions? وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And says that I am among the Muslims. It doesn't say, وَقَالَ لِنَفْسِهِ Says to himself that I'm Muslim. He says, no, وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ That I am definitely a Muslim. Next time that you do something to a non-Muslim, if you pull over on the highway and help someone change their tire, tell them, and they say, thank you. you know, that was very nice of you. Why'd you do that? I'm, I'm a Muslim. That's why I did this action. And then walk away. Alhamdulillah. They will listen. People, people don't know what Islam is. They haven't seen it. And they need to see it to become Muslim. That's what I needed. Because there's many people around the world, many people that I know that have similar situations to me that they have that idea, I believe in God, don't really follow a religion in particular. They're, they're near that path, they're walking around that path. And sometimes giving them directions isn't the only way to get to it. Sometimes you have to see someone walking along that path to find your way. And again, please don't think that you know, the non-Muslims coming to Islam are the only ones with a path. Every single one of us has a path to Islam. Every single one of us who is Muslim sitting here has testified that they believe in one God, Allah, and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. And we're all walking that path together. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Jazakallah khairan.